Climate change has become one of the major environmental threats facing the world today. This change has been driven by global warming, which has been a result of increased carbon dioxide emissions. Over the past 30 years, there have been observed decreases in snow and ice extent in the Arctic by 2.7% per decade with larger decreases in summer of 7.4% per decade. At current rates, experts fear the Arctic may be entirely free of ice in summer by 2014. The Netherlands, with nearly half of its land area under sea level, is likely to be affected by increase in sea levels as a result of melting ice caps and thermal expansion of the seas due to increasing global temperatures. Well, I think uh, climate change is a real threat for the Netherlands. Actually, we are uh, threatened from both sides. Our front door, okay, which is the sea, the sea level rise. But in the delta, we also have a back door, rivers coming into the Netherlands from the back side like the Rhein and the Maas and the Schelde, and there will be uh, higher discharges. So, as a matter of fact, the Netherlands is a low-lying delta being squeezed between two masses of water, which may rise sea level and river discharge. In fact, the Commission um, predicts that uh, in, in winter, rainfall will increase, and in summer it will be lower, so the peaks will increase. Rising sea levels of the past have often been associated with destruction of infrastructure as well as loss of life. An example of this is the 1953 flood which left 1800 people dead in the South Holland and Zealand province. To protect people and land from further floods, the Delta Plan saw the strengthening of existing dikes and raising them higher and higher. Dolded is a city located in the low-lying area in South Holland province. Like other Delta cities, it is likely to be affected by climate change, particularly sea level and river level rise. Take a closer look at Dodrek, its vulnerability, as well as adaptation measures to climate change. So here we are uh, in Dodrecht, outside the primary dikes. That means that this area where we are now is not protected uh, by any dikes. And you can see that, that here is directly the, the river, the Merwe the river. Uh, which has the flow from both the Rhine and the River Maas. Mm. And all this area, the old harbor and historic uh, city center, is not protected by any collective system. So the people, to protect themselves against the flooding, they have to take individual measures. Uh, yeah. The first example, what you see here, is uh, this system. Yeah, so the people, they put a door guard inside. So it's just some fences which they put in front of the door. So in that way, the water will not go into the house. Yeah, you see the windows, they are a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah the people have protected themselves with the stairs here. Uh, so when the water comes from the river onto the street, the water will not flow into the house. Yeah, the, uh, the entrance is higher. And also, if you look inside, also the floor level is also a little bit higher than the street level. Well, here you can see that the road uh, it's slightly going up, mm -hmm. and that's because uh, the street over there, the Voorstad, is the main dike. It's part of the main dike system of, uh, of Dordrecht. On a larger scale, Dordrecht is part of the urban flood management program together with Hamburg and London. This project seeks 
to strengthen cities against floods. The two main aims <coughs> for, the, for the municipality of, of Dordrecht is a brownfield development, uh, old harbor area which is, will now be redeveloped into a new housing, residential area uh, which is outside of the main dike ring. And uh, a large part of the historical city of Dordrecht, which is one of the oldest cities in the Netherlands, is located outside of the uh, of the dike ring as well. So uh, yeah, the, the aims are twofold: to, to uh, provide a strategy to develop this uh, new residential area, being flood-proof, uh, to changing uh, river discharges, uh, water stages, and on the other hand, to see uh, how climate change and, and more specifically, uh, flooding will uh, future flooding will will affect uh, the historical center of Dordrecht. I think there's there's a few issues. There might be some uh, scientific criticism, especially also in my department in the damage assessment. Uh, flood damage assessment is still, I would say, in its infancy. Uh, the, although we think we we we. we put the science uh, a bit forward, we made a big step, uh, there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty about the estimations that we made. It has to do with the diversity, for instance, of the built environment. We had a lot of data, but this data uh, will never really cover the actual uh, situation. With predicted 24 centimeter rise in sea level, the cost of river works and coastal dike reinforcement are expected to rise to 9.2 billion euros in 2040 and to 30 billion euros in 2100 with 85 centimeter rise. This is against the current cost of 18 million euros. Given higher and higher costs of protecting low-lying cities like Dordrecht and Rotterdam in the long term, is it wise to continue investing in these areas or is it time to start considering shifting investment focus to higher and safer areas? That if you look at the map of the Netherlands, if you look what's very flat-prone areas and why are all the economic activities there, it's not very a logical choice. The thing is that economically it has grown in history like that so you can't if you're gonna take uh, make plans for the future you always have to take into account what ha the history you can't change and start again you can't make a new blank canvas and start drawing again so you always and shifting uh, in turn also costs a lot of money uh, there's a lot of resistance because uh, there's a reason why in the west of the country they chose to settle because it's uh, the accessibility to the sea, uh, like Rotterdam, is a very important harbor in the world. Uh, it's flat, so it's very easy to make roads. Um, so it it grew, and you can't change that very easily. It will cost a lot of money to change it as well. So that also is an economic question. What you do see is that the government does stimulate. Uh, and always has been stimulating, but that's mainly for the economic situation of the east, south and north part of the Netherlands. We're not going to move. We're not going to move to Germany or another place. And we stay here in this place, which means that our investment will increase. So that means that we have to make the country less vulnerable. The, the, so the decision has been, has been made, political decision. Whether this is wise, I don't know. Sometimes you think it's not wise, but at a certain moment there is a point of no return. You cannot say we pack our goodies and we take up Rotterdam and we move it to Amersfoort or so. The Socialist Party, uh, our view, uh, I think it would be uh, smarter if we uh, should uh, uh, gradually uh, uh, move the investments from the Randstad to the higher parts of Holland. With different views on this issue and uncertainties of impacts and costs of adaptations, only time will tell. But for now, keeping Dordrecht and other low-lying cities safe is a key priority.